Today is my dear sister-in-law's wedding, but here I am lying in a hospital bed. On the way to the venue, I got into a collision with a car that ran a red light. Why does this have to happen on such an important day? I rarely ever get into accidents. Amidst all this, I received an angry call from my husband. Where are you now? I had an accident, and I am at the hospital. What? It's my sister's big day. Do you understand that? I understand, but shut up. Listen to me. You crawl if you have to, but you must attend. Got it? Yes. I told the doctor, who tried to stop me about the situation, and headed to the venue in a taxi in my battered state. When my husband noticed my presence, he criticized me in my hospital gown. What the heck are you wearing? Are you trying to ruin my sister's big day? You really are a loser. I had just been thinking that maybe I shouldn't have come at all. When things unexpectedly took a turn, my name is Nora, and I am 33 years old. After graduating from technical school, I obtained a qualification as a wedding planner, and now work for a bridal production company, supporting weddings. I began to want to become a wedding planner in my high school years. When I attended my cousin's wedding, I was captivated by the beautiful atmosphere. Not only the bride and groom, but also all the other guests were able to smile. When I found out that there was a job that could create such an atmosphere, I began to want to work in that field. My long cherished dream has come true, and I am now doing the job I have always wanted to do. There are people who have many meetings before the wedding, and there are those who leave everything to us. Among the various couples. I always try to make it the best wedding for them. Two years ago, I got married as well. My partner's name is Troy, who was a classmate in high school. We were in the same music club, but we didn't start dating back then. We reunited at a high school reunion a few years ago and developed a relationship that led to marriage. At first, after getting married. I was very happy to be living the life I wanted with the person I loved. However, now that two years have passed since our marriage, my true feelings have changed. I think that I should not have gotten married. This feeling started in the first year of our marriage. Although we had small arguments on a daily basis, there were times when we didn't talk to each other all day long. One day, I had to work overtime, which was unusual, and came home after 8 p.m. Before leaving the workplace, I checked my smartphone and saw that my husband had called me dozens of times. I called him back, but there was no sign of him answering. When I became anxious and hurried back home, there he was, lying on the sofa. I ran to him, worried, and called out to him. Hey, Troy, are you okay? Huh? What do you mean? Well, I saw a bunch of missed calls from you, so I thought something might have happened. What? Don't you know why I called you? My husband is staring at me in a bad mood, and eventually, he started fiddling out of frustration. I couldn't help but sense his irritation. I had no idea why my husband was so angry. Did I inadvertently do something to upset him? With that thought in mind, I asked him hastily, "Hey, did I do something? Did I do something to make you so angry?" "Huh? It's because you came home late. You are a wife, but you prioritize your work over your husband." T "Try." My voice trembled involuntarily as I saw my husband's demon-like expression. It was the first time I had ever seen him like this, so I didn't know how to respond. Ignoring my fear, my husband clicked his tongue intentionally and gave me a disdainful look. Then spoke to me roughly, as if he couldn't be bothered. 
Listen, you don't have enough awareness as a wife. I married a woman like you, who's nothing special. You should be grateful to me. Troy, what are you talking about? We got married because we love each other. Huh? There is no way that's true. I only talked to you at the reunion because you had a better face than most. What? That's a lie, right? It doesn't matter. You ended up falling in love with me anyway. Well, I thought you were more capable of doing household chores. But that was a miscalculation. That's terrible. What do you think of me? I'm not your housekeeper. It sounds like my husband is giving a cold, menacing glare as I try to argue back with him. I was visibly shaking, and he seems to be looking down on me. Listen, you are in the position of someone who was married of. Therefore, you should be grateful to me. Got it? W what? We are not an equal couple. That's just on the surface. I didn't really fall in love with you or anything like that. Then what's the point of being married? Let's get a divorce right now. Are you sure about that? Your parents were happy about this marriage, weren't they? Plus, you get along well with my family. Can you really just decide to get a divorce all of a sudden like this? As my husband uttered those words, my chest tightened with a strong grip. He was right. My parents were overjoyed with their marriage. And his parents also treated me like their own daughter. Even his sister adored me. Could I really make them all sad with my selfish feelings? I couldn't hurt the people who cared for me. My husband knew my kind-hearted nature well, and that was why he could make such a strong statement. He was taking advantage of my kindness. His arrogance angered me, but I didn't have the courage to stand up to him. Since then, my husband treated me like a housekeeper. If I came home late, he complained. And if I wasn't prepared for meals or bath on his schedule, he would yell mercilessly. He even threw things at me when he was in a bad mood. Every time he did that, I poured out my thoughts and feelings into my diary. I wrote down what he did and said, and how I felt at the time. By recording these events in detail, I was able to calm my emotions. This kind of married life continued for two years. I had gotten used to it, but my heart was still worn down. One day, some happy news came to me. Huh, marriage? I involuntarily asked back in a loud voice. The person on the phone was my husband's sister, Iris. Yes. I'm getting married. Iris happily told me over the phone. Oh, congratulations, Iris! I'm so happy for you. Thank you very much. And there's something I want to ask you, Nora. Something you want to ask me? I'll do anything I can for you. Um, actually, we haven't decided on a wedding venue or anything yet. So I really want to consult with you as a wedding planner. With me? Of course. I'll be glad to do it. Really? Thank you, sis. I love you. The next day, I started to carve out time for my beloved sister-in-law and began to plan her wedding. I knew well that there should be no difference in how I treated my clients. But I still wanted to provide the best wedding possible for Iris, who I cared about deeply. After about five months, the preparations for the wedding were completed without a hitch. I don't work at the wedding venue, so my job as a bridal protection company ends here. But this time, I can attend the wedding ceremony that I supported as a relative. There's nothing more joyful than this. Making my sister in those wedding the best it can be, and being able to attend it myself, has a significant meaning to me. On the day of the wedding ceremony, I had some business to attend to at work, 
so I was heading to the venue separately from my husband. After quickly finishing my work at the company, I headed straight to the venue. While looking at my watch and crossing the pedestrian crossing, a car came running towards me, ignoring the traffic signal and collided with my body. With a dull sound of thud, my consciousness was lost. When I came to, I was lying on the hospital bed. My body was in pain, and bandages were wrapped around my arms and legs. That's right, I was in an accident at that time. Fortunately, I didn't seem to have broken any bones. However, there is a dull sensation in my right foot, and I cannot move it well. For now, I called the nurse and waited for her arrival. The nurse confirmed that I had awakened and called the doctor. You're Nora, right? Do you remember colliding with the car that ran a red light at the intersection? Yes, I do. It was a dark green car, I believe. Yes, that's correct. Fortunately, you didn't suffer any serious injuries. That's great news. The numbness you're feeling in certain area should improve gradually with physical therapy during your hospital stay. I see. Thank you very much. The doctor leaves the room, and I laid back down on the bed. It's then that I remembered something important. Wait, isn't today Iris's wedding? As I search through my bag for my phone, it starts ringing. Hey, Nora. Where are you and what are you doing? Frantically responding to the call, my husband shouts at me over the phone. Iris's wedding is about to start, you know. Troy, thank God you called. Honey, it's perfect timing. Actually, I got into an accident on my way to the wedding. What? An accident? Yeah. So I don't think I'll be able to make it today. My husband yelled at me, as if my words were a nuisance. His voice was piercingly loud. Don't you dare mess around. Today is my sister's big day. You know that, right? I know, but right now. What? Shut up. Listen. Even if you have to crawl, you are going to attend the ceremony. Got it? But but. I realized that there was no point in explaining further, since he wouldn't listen anyway. Talking to him would be futile. I felt our marriage crumble before my eyes, and I became aware of this. I had had enough. Normally, I wouldn't be able to attend the ceremony in my current state. However, I desperately wanted to be there for Iris's wedding. But if I did attend, would it mean we would continue in this deteriorating marriage? As I pondered this question, I slowly got out of bed, grabbed my bag, and left the hospital room. As I stumbled down the hallway, a nurse stopped me as expected. I explained the situation to my doctor. And managed to hail a taxi in my battered state. Thirty minutes later, I arrived at the wedding venue, and people began to stir at my appearance. That was when I finally realized that I had come to the ceremony in my hospital gown. However, there was no time to change now. I decided to quietly sit in a corner until the ceremony began. As I sat on my chair, thinking about this. I heard someone call my name, Nora. My husband runs towards me with a demonic expression on his face. He looks down at me and says coldly, "What the heck are you wearing? Are you kidding me?" I'm not kidding. I came here in a hurry from the hospital, so I ended up in this outfit. Don't talk back to me. Huh? <sighs> Come on. It's supposed to be the big day for Iris, and you're ruining the mood with your ugly face. I'm sorry. Seriously. Listen, you are not allowed to say a word today. 
Just behave yourself. Got it? Oh, okay. As I nod, my husband looks down on me with a triumphant expression. I thought to myself that I would have been better not to come in the first place if it was going to be like this. That's when Iris, her face red, appeared. Hey, Troy! What was that just now? Troy notices her and asks, Oh, Iris, what's wrong? Are you ready? Never mind that. Just answer me. What was that conversation just now? Why is Nora in such a state here? Listen, she got into an accident on her way here. She's so clumsy. But don't worry, I made sure to bring her to the Vini for you. Huh? An accident? Is it true, Nora? I slowly nod at my sister-in-law staring at me. And then, her face turns red as if on fire and she hits my husband with all her might. With a dry sound of a slap, my husband's head tilts. Troy holds his left cheek and snaps at Iris. Hey, Iris! What the hell are you doing? That's my word! What the hell is going on here? Why did you forcefully bring her here, even though she's in a such state? Are you crazy or something? Wait a minute, Iris. I did it for your sake. How is this for my sake? My beloved sister is in such a terrible state. Did you think that I would be happy seeing her like this? Well, that's... My sister-in-law gives my husband a piercing glare, and Troy flinches at her intense gaze. I can't believe my own brother would do something like this. It's inhumane. Uh, Iris, you don't have to say it like that. What? I'm controlling my emotions here and being mindful of the situation. You are a scumbag. You're not even part of our family. You don't even have to come to the wedding. W why? I did it for your sake. My husband turned to me, tears welling up in his eyes and desperately clung to me. Nora, please say something to her too. That I did it for Iris. Right, Nora? Come on. What? Why me? Isn't it obvious? If you hadn't gotten into an accident, we wouldn't have had to do this. My husband, instead of acknowledging his own mistakes, blamed me for getting into an accident. I took a deep breath and said to my husband, So, it's my fault that I got into an accident? This is what you think? I wanted to be here as soon as possible too. It's Iris's important wedding after all. I couldn't hold back my emotions. Despite that, instead of comforting me, you told me to crawl over here. What do you think I am? Some kind of joke? Well, that's... I don't need you to tell me. I care about Iris and wanted to participate in the wedding from the beginning. That's why I listened to your stupid demands and crawled my way over here. Calm down. It's a wedding today. We can talk later. Shut up. I can't forgive you for trampling all over someone's feelings like this on a day like today. I have no intention of continuing to be married to a person like you any longer. I'm not your maid. Do whatever you want by yourself. I said that and headed towards the exit. My sister and or Iris supported my back as if to comfort me. Hey, Nora, I'll take a lot of pictures of the wedding for you to see later. Iris, with tears in my eyes, my sister-in-law continued. Don't cry. I want you to see me at my happiest more than anyone else, okay? Yeah, thank you. I got back in a taxi and returned to the hospital. The attending doctor scolded me severely, and I ended up being hospitalized for several days. Later, I heard from Iris that my husband couldn't attend the wedding ceremony. 
relatives who had overheard our conversation became furious and rained down insults on Troy. They even said that he wasn't a member of the family, and he was kicked out of the venue. With encouragement from Iris, I decided to divorce my husband. The diary where I had written down his harassment turned out to be advantageous for the divorce. Although all of this happened after I was discharged from the hospital, I no longer wanted to give up on my life. I couldn't sacrifice my precious life for a man like him. I will be busy with the divorce process for a while, but I still believe I will eventually be happy and continue to fight for it. My sister asked me to invite my mother-in-law to her wedding, but she refused with unkind words. What? You want me to attend your sister's wedding? I'm definitely not interested. Well, I wanted to make my sister happy. Do you really think it's worth my time to attend your sister's wedding? My mother-in-law smirked and calmly started her refusal. I knew she didn't like me, but I never thought it would affect my sister's wedding. However, she still hasn't realized that things are already in motion behind the scenes. My name is Daisy, and I am 36 years old. I lost my father when I was young, and had to start working right after graduating from junior high school to support my sickly mother and sister. Every day was a struggle. But I felt relieved when my mother passed away five years ago. My sister became independent, so I didn't need to work so hard anymore. I'm currently a housewife, having married my husband Nathan, who was a regular customer at the cafe where I used to work. I resigned from the cafe after we got married, and it was all thanks to Nathan. When he proposed to me, he looked apologetic and told me the reason why. I have a request for you, Daisy. If you don't mind, would you become a housewife after we get married? Huh? Me? A housewife? Well, you know, I can't do any housework, right? So I think I'll leave all the housework for you. In return, I want to work hard and support us financially. But that would put a lot of burden on you, Nathan. I love my job, so it's okay. Besides, I always hated that my mom worked outside all the time. His mother is a famous cooking researcher, named Karen Walker, who is almost seventy years old, but still works vigorously. She is invited as a guest on daytime cooking shows, and her recipes are also published in magazines. She is more than just a hobbyist cooking instructor. I have tasted her cooking a few times, and it is not an exaggeration to say that it is very delicious. My mother and sister even purchased her cookbook. When we decided to get married, my friends envied me for having Karen Walker as my family. By the way, my husband's parents divorced when he was young, and his mother, who was raising Nathan alone, worked hard every day as a cooking researcher. However, it sometimes caused difficulties for her young son. She received attention from the public due to her fame, and at that time she was subjected to hurtful words. Due to her busy schedule, my husband was not able to express his painful feelings to anyone, and had kept them bottled up. As a result, my husband and his mother had a strained relationship for a while. At that time, he even hated his mother a little bit. He said so with a slightly sad expression. Perhaps because of his past experiences, he wants me to be a housewife, so that our future children won't feel lonely. I decided to support him as a housewife while understanding his feelings. I also wanted to maintain a good relationship with my mother-in-law while keeping a certain distance. However, I soon realized the harsh reality: the Karen Walker as a mother-in-law was a more terrifying person than I had imagined. 
which became apparent a few months after we got married. My mom says to come and visit. One day, my husband said to me out of blue, and we visited her. I felt a bit nervous as we arrived at my in-law's house. I have never had a proper conversation with my mother-in-law before, as she has always been busy with work. Even during a marriage proposal, she had to take a work call, and we didn't get to talk much. I have visited their house a few times for family gatherings, but it seemed like every time I went, my mother-in-law had some urgent work to attend to. Nevertheless, I have tasted her cooking before, as she always sends some dishes for my husband to take home after work. As a gesture of gratitude, I brought along some small gifts as we headed to their house. As soon as we arrived, my mother-in-law greeted us with a smile at the entrance. Whoa, it's been a while. Are you doing well, Nathan? Yeah, I'm doing fine. How about you, mom? You look great as always. Of course. If I'm not healthy, I can't continue working. You never change. But don't work too hard. And make sure you take care of yourself. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've always been physically strong. I couldn't really join in on the conversation between my husband and his mother. So my mother-in-law took notice and turned her gaze towards me. Then slowly started talking to me. It's been a while since we last met, Daisy. Have you been well? Yes, thank you. Sorry for not keeping in touch. Oh, that's okay. I'm usually quite busy myself. Your cooking is always delicious, Karen. I really enjoy it. Um, here. This is for you. I hope you like it. Oh, chocolate. Looks nice. Come on in. I've made dinner. Upon receiving the souvenir, my mother-in-law smiled and urged my husband and me to come in. It was the first time we had met in a while, but our friendly personality made me feel a little more at ease. As soon as we were led into the living room, my mother-in-law suddenly exclaimed in a loud voice, What, mom? When my husband asked her back, she said apologetically, I'm sorry, Nathan. I seem to have ran out of milk. Milk? Are you using it for something? I'm using it for dessert. I'm sorry to ask, but could you go buy some? Okay, I got it. I'll go to the supermarket. Thank you. Then, my mother-in-law let out a sigh and glared at me, creating an awkward atmosphere as my husband left the house. I never thought someone like you would actually marry Nathan, you know? Huh? Um, what do you mean? I mean, Nathan marrying an uneducated high school dropout like you. I never thought it would happen. Wait, are you talking about me? Who else could I be talking about? I thought if I didn't interfere, you would break up eventually. But I guess I was wrong. So, you were against me marrying Nathan? My trembling voice asked if that was the case, and I was fearful. Mocking me, my mother-in-law showed a smile, calmly saying yes. The world in front of me turned dark with that one word. It was at that moment I realized that my mother-in-law hated me. She continued to berate me mercilessly with a sneer on her face while I was left speechless. Listen, Daisy, did you really think that I would ever accept someone like you? Bottom feeders like you, who only have a middle school education? Wait a minute. I only dropped out to work and support my mother and sister. Do you think that's enough to make me shed tears? You are nothing but a parasite who's dependent on Nathan now. How dare you speak with such arrogance? That's not what I meant. Anyway, you should break up with Nathan as soon as possible. Huh? 
Don't say anything unnecessary to Nathan. Just tell him you want a divorce. Wait, hold on a minute. There was a sound of the front door opening, and then I heard my husband's voice saying, I'm home. My mother-in-law quickly headed to the entrance to greet him. My head was still filled with the hurtful words my mother-in-law had just thrown at me. I had no idea she thought so poorly of me. To her, I was nothing more than a nuisance. It wasn't just the fact that she had insulted me by calling me a high school dropout. What hurt me the most was being called a parasite who depended on my husband for everything. He asked if something had happened, but I didn't feel like I could tell him the truth. After that day, my mother-in-law started to harass me. Every time we were invited to my in-law's house, she would find ways to leave us alone and would say hurtful things to me. I even received snarky messages on my phone. Three years had passed since we got married, but the situation didn't change. Still, I didn't want to ruin my relationship with my husband, so I endured the harassment silently. One day, my sister Hazel called me. She sounded she was happy to talk to me. Hey Daisy, it's me. Good to hear your voice. Hello Hazel, what's up? Actually, can I talk to you about something related to the upcoming wedding? Oh, it's coming up soon, isn't it? What about the wedding? Well, I was wondering if it's possible to invite Miss Walker. Wait, you want me to invite Karen, my mother-in-law? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Miss Walker, so I was hoping she could come to the wedding. Hearing Hazel's happy voice makes my heart ache. If possible, I don't want to have anything to do with her. However, I can't tell my happy sister that. I inform her that I understand and make up my mind to call my mother-in-law. She answered the phone with a cold voice. What is it, Daisy? Um, I have a little request, actually. Huh? Why should I listen to your request? It's not for me. But rather, it's a request from my sister. Your sister? Yes. My sister Hazel is a big fan of yours, and she really wants you to come to the wedding. There's a silence on the other end of the phone. And as the silence drags on, my heart starts to beat loudly. As expected, my mother-in-law responds with cruel words. Huh, me? At your sister's wedding? What kind of joke is that? No, it's not a joke. So, you were serious about it? You're asking me, someone like me, to attend your family's wedding? Obviously, I don't want to. But my sister is a really big fan of you, and do you really think it's worth my precious time to attend the wedding of a high school dropout's little sister? My mother-in-law spoke as if my lack of education was the reason she couldn't participate. I couldn't find the words to respond, and she just chuckled at me. Don't underestimate me. I'm a popular cooking researcher, Karen Walker. It's already embarrassing enough that my son's wife only has a middle school education. Why should I bother going to your sister's wedding? Please, I just want to make my sister happy. No, I don't care what happens to you and your sister. I don't have time to be nice to poor, uneducated people like you. At the moment, an anger that I had never felt before surged through my body. It was the moment I swore a revenge against my mother-in-law. I couldn't forgive her for belittling my sister just because she didn't like me. I absolutely couldn't forgive her. If that's how it was going to be, I was going to corner her completely. I immediately began taking action to get revenge on my mother-in-law. I went to the in-law's house alone, 
turn on the recording function on my smartphone and rang the intercom. My mother-in-law made no attempts to hide the fact that she was displeased. What are you doing burgeoning into my house like this? Please, I'm begging you. Ah, oh, it's about that earlier conversation, isn't it? No, it's a waste of time. Don't make me repeat myself. Please, I'm begging you. I want to make my sister happy. I don't care. Why should I waste my valuable time for people like you? People like us? It is frustrating, but there is no point in arguing back at this moment. I took a deep breath and lowered my head to my mother-in-law once again, trying to keep calm. Please, I'm begging you. I want you to attend my sister's wedding to make her happy. You're so persistent. I won't do it. No matter how much you ask, I won't lower my pride to fulfill the request of a daughter-in-law who's only graduated from junior high. Please, can't you find a way to make it happen? At that moment, my mother-in-law suddenly grabbed my bangs to pull them up, bringing her face close to mine and slowly speaking. Do you understand your position? You are a poor, uneducated woman who didn't even finish middle school. Asking me for favor is out of the question. I don't want to associate with a lower class family like yours. You don't have to say like that. Oh well, I guess your parents are already gone, aren't they? How pitiful. It was then that I had no regrets in front of my mother-in-law, who looked down on me. When I glared at her, she trembled for a moment. What's with that look in your eyes? I calmly told her as she raised her voice. I understand. The matter regarding my sister's wedding is fine now. What? You backed down easily. Then you should have listened to me from the beginning. Seeing her actions, I took out my smartphone and sent the recorded audio file to my husband. Seeing me do this, my mother-in-law trembled and asked me, D -d -d Daisy, what are you doing now? Oh, actually, I've been recording our conversation the whole time. I just sent the recording to my husband. W w wait a minute, what are you doing? Is there a problem? This is a big problem. You did something without telling me. Who do you think I am? I am Karen Walker. So what? As I calmly spoke, my mother-in-law's expression began to stiffen. I mercilessly continued speaking, as if to vent all of my pent-up resentment. There's no way I could tolerate someone who judges people based on their academic background. It's true that I only have a middle school education, but that doesn't mean I haven't struggled. I worked hard for my family, and I've lived my life with all my might. I won't stand for you denying my life like that. Daisy, please calm down. The neighbors can hear you. Despite the situation, my mother-in-law was still only thinking about herself. I continued to berate her in a loud voice that could be heard throughout the neighborhood. Are you saying that being rich makes you great? Or that graduating from college makes you superior? That's absolutely not true. I might only have a middle school education, but I am happy to be married to Nathan. What do you think Nathan will feel about your true nature? You're going to end up being hated by your beloved son. It's too bad. I shoved my phone screen in front of my mother-in-law's face. There was a message from my husband on the phone screen that said, I'm cutting tie with you, mom. My mother-in-law turned pale and collapsed to her knees. I left without helping her. Later, my husband called his mother and clearly told her about the estrangement. I could hear my mother-in-law crying and screaming on the phone so loud that even I could hear her. This incident caused my mother-in-law to become emotionally unstable 
and it began to affect her work. She threw harsh words at her staff and hurled abuse at her co-stars, causing a lot of problems. As a result, she gradually lost her work and recently stopped appearing in the media altogether. I have some mixed feelings, but I don't regret what happened. It was my mother-in-law's own doing. On the other hand, my husband suggested that we move to an apartment near his company. He probably wanted to get away from his mother as well. We live peaceful days now. To my delight, we recently welcomed a new life into our family. When this child brings a marriage partner someday, I don't want to reject them, no matter who they are. I want to be a parent who respects their children's feelings rather than unilaterally deciding things.